So the Prusa MK4, I have a lot of first impressions that I'd like to cover in this video. First off, I wanna give the disclaimer that this is my first uh, Prusa machine. I have used other types of 3D printers, all FDM printers. Um, I've owned a Sovol SV06, a Creality Ender 3, a Bamboo Lab P1P. Uh, I still have the Bamboo Lab P1P and I have the Prusa MK4 now. So uh, I'm not necessarily new to the 3D printing game, but I am new to Prusa. So I may identify some things that's just long time Prusa issues uh, or things that they're known for, you know, just keep that in mind. I am new to their community. For, so first off, I wanna talk about the print quality. It is great, but it's not perfect, um, which of course that's completely okay. Nothing is going to be completely perfect, um, but there are a few little things that have popped up that's just a kind of annoying when it comes to uh, the printing process. So this only applies to third-party filaments. When using Prusament with the presets um, and the pre-cut models and everything they have, built into Prusa Slicer and the printer by default, that it's flawless. Like the prints look so good. As a matter of fact, let me grab one and I'll show you real quick. So this is one of the prints that come on the SD card. You can see it's very, very optimized, very low level lines here. I mean, it's just overall a very, very solid print. So this is the first thing that I printed that was a little longer. I did like a, a bed scraper before this, but, um, this is the first thing where I was like, man, the print quality is really good on this machine. And it totally is. Like, I'm amazed at how good this is for a 0.2 layer height. But then I started printing with Overture filament. Here in America, it's a little harder to get your hands on Prusament, at least at a decent price. Like, it's already $35 to $50 a spool in some cases. And then you're also paying the shipping and the shipping times and you know, it's a lot. So if you're like me where you're just buying a spool every now and then, it doesn't make sense. It makes a lot more sense for me to go onto Amazon and pick up like a $20, $30 uh, roll and have it delivered, you know, next day. So I've been printing with Overture. That's just kind of something I've landed on. It's easy to get. There's lots of color choices and the stock seems to be pretty good on it. And luckily Prusa Slicer has a built-in uh, setting for Overture, but unfortunately it stinks. And I would assume that this is the case with a lot of the third-party filaments. There's, they do a pretty good job of like setting it up at least to a, like a minimum viable product or a minimum viable preset, but you really have to tweak it as you know you do with every other printer. So don't think that this is like a set it and forget it type of experience, at least if you want like a perfect print. Here's the example that I wanna show. So I was printing a cover for a YubiKey. This is it. See those layer lines? This is with the stock preset for Overture. You have tons of layer lines here. Uh, ringing, it's just not a very good print. And honestly, some people some people may be happy with this, but I, I wanna get it as close to perfection as possible. I've been, in, I've been doing sc screen printing um, for many years and I am very meticulous about what I put out. And if I'm going to sell something, I wanna make sure that it's the best it possibly can be. And I wouldn't hold that to um, my standard. So uh, I did some tweaking, I ended up changing the perimeters to print first. And uh, I think that's the only thing I did with this second print, but you can see what it looks like here. Looks a lot better, but you still have a few layer lines. There you go with the light, you can see it very well. But I made one more change and that was to the flow. Cause I was like, this looks like over extrusion in a way. So I went ahead and lowered the extrusion to 0.95 and got what I would consider an almost perfect print. Let me show you that one. Ooh, I had to search for that one. So you can see the layer lines are not as bad. You still have some ringing here. Uh, and here's the thing, I don't know the best way to get rid of that right now, especially with input shaping not being alive, but you can see it's a pretty smooth surface overall. And that kind of leads into the next thing uh, of the initial impressions. It's hard to say that this is a review of the MK4, considering that the input shaping isn't available yet. That's gonna be a game changer for this machine and honestly is what's going to keep it viable. To be honest with you, there's a lot of other companies out there that are innovating more than what Prusa has on these machines. But from what I can tell, they're reliable. You just can print it and you know it's going to work out fairly well. Um, I would say that 
this is still a hobby, what I would consider a very hobby grade. If this was a scale between like hobby grade and commercial, I would say that Prusa sits more on the lines, like past the middle point, closer to commercial. But I would say that if it were between this and Bamboo Lab, Bamboo Lab is more commercial. It's more nicely packaged. It's not like as... It's not open source, so it's not as customizable per se. But you know, I think that that's something to keep in mind is that if you want a machine that is just very reliable, you want a machine that has pretty good print quality out of the box. And I think that what I'm showing you is it's going to get better once input shaping is, is available. Um, you can't go wrong with this. I will say it's a, it's a little pricey compared to models out there like the Elegoo Neptune series, the Anycubics, the uh honestly the ender line the ender 3 is still a solid printer and even though it's a little on the slow side it's pretty reliable once you get it set up and dialed in but i'm getting ahead of myself let me go ahead and talk about another feature that i think that i'll that sets out the mk4 to be successful in their long run and that is the built-in wi-fi and i know i'm gonna have people rolling their eyes saying you know you can add wi-fi whatever 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 I understand that. I ran Octoprint on my Creality Ender 3, but just having something out of the box that's first party, the the Connect feature, the Prusa Connect is, is great. It solves the needs. It keeps me from having to have a separate server running at all times. It's just running with the machine and running in the cloud. It, it gives a very... It gives a very good user experience. Um, it's definitely still in beta. It's a little wonky sometimes. The camera feature, from what I can tell, only supports... Um, uh, you have to use an old tablet, an old phone, or like an old notebook. And it's seriously just sending snapshots. Like every 30 seconds, minute, 10 seconds, whatever you want. So there's not like a live view. But... I think it could get there and I do overall like the look of the UI and the fact that it just works out of the box. I will say the setup process for Wi-Fi and Prusa Connect is not very user intuitive. Um, if you're if you're new and you're not as like tech savvy, um, it can be a little weird. Literally to set this thing up on Wi-Fi, you have to download a file from the printer, take it to your computer through the, through like a USB stick, update it in a text editor, save it to the USB, take it back to the printer, and then you can flash it on there. And whenever it, and then it'll start connecting to Wi-Fi. It's a little weird. It's, you only have to do that once, maybe twice if you've changed your Wi-Fi password or something, who knows, but it's not a very common occurrence, but I definitely think that that's something that they could improve for user experience. Lastly, the build quality is one thing I wanted to mention. It, overall, solid. It's great. It's like for it to come pre-assembled and work right out of the box. I didn't have to do any tweaking. The belts were perfectly tensioned. Uh, the self-calibration ran or the auto test, whatever they call it. No, no issues at all. Like it's it's awesome. Uh, I will say I've had uh, one firmware bug that whenever I turned on the machine, it would give an alert that's came up twice saying that it like failed to start or something. It's I looked it up online. It's as simple as turning off the machine and turning it back on. So it's clearly like something weird with the firmware. So I'm sure that'll get worked out as this machine um, becomes more in use and they, they are able to develop it more. A lot of people were saying that the Prusa MK4 was rushed and... I kind of agree in a way. Eh, I, I mean, it's tough to say. I mean, they they're, they definitely took their time with it. Um, but I definitely think that I would have probably have shipped it with input shaping instead of releasing it like a month later. That seems kind of weird. I don't know what kind of deadline they were trying to meet and why they decided that. Also, it seems like they're running into some manufacturing issues. Um, but overall, I think the feature set and the hardware itself, I don't feel like it was rushed. I think it's more of just the firmware the software and just the logistics of manufacturing these machines probably could could use some more ironing out before it went into mass production. But yeah, that's my initial thoughts of the Prusa MK4. I love it. I plan on continuing to use it as one of my main printers and you know, hopefully input shaping comes out and I can do an update video on that and show you, you know, what it looks like, how it runs and if it's improved this like ghosting ring effect that I'm currently uh, having from like, it's definitely resonance. I just, 
I don't, I don't know how to s solve it other than slowing down the printer, but I don't want to do that. So <laughs> I'll just deal with it in the meantime. Thanks so much for checking out today's video. We'll see you next time on Shareway Tech.